Welcome to Uzbekistan. Not many people travel to this country. They might think it's dangerous here. Oh my gosh, that's so dangerous right now. Or maybe they trust other stereotypes. They didn't let us go at all. I wanted to see the reality of Uzbekistan myself. And together with my two friends, Slava and Natasha, I traveled around the counter. Firstly, discovering the modern part of it, ski resort Amirsoy, and later exploring the ancient cities of Uzbekistan, Samarkand and Bukhara. We talked to the locals, tried national dishes, and learned more about the Uzbek culture. And I'm ready to introduce it to you. So, what were we waiting for? Hello from Tashkent, guys, the capital of Uzbekistan. Last night, my friend and I just came here. We didn't do much. We had a very nice dinner of local food and we just went to sleep. But right now, we are ready to start exploring the country. The first thing first, we need to buy SIM card and then we are meeting another friend of ours and we'll go to the mountain. So, let's go. I really like this unique Soviet architecture and also the combination of languages on signs. One of my first impressions that there is so much garbage. Like why? So sad. Right now I came to Beeline provider to get a SIM card and we were a little bit surprised that you can't get it without a registration from a hotel in Uzbekistan. Uh, I've never seen this before to be honest, so now we needed to go to our hotel and they're gonna send us by WhatsApp a picture of our registration and only after that we're gonna get uh, the SIM card. price for a SIM card with 30 gigabytes was about $10. We were just absolutely shocked when we found out that we can't pay for the SIM card with international card, non-Georgian, non-Turkish card. So I had to go right now to ATM to withdraw money. And by the way, just look how it looks like. I'm a millionaire. Here it's $180. Look, and the currency. Five, uh, 50, After that, we met with Slava, took our rental car, and went to explore this wonderful country. And it was a very interesting and unusual for Western country situation. Uh, the Google showed out the road, which we followed, and then the policeman stopped us on the highway, which was completely empty. And it turned out that it's a private highway for president. And it's closed for normal, like normal people like us. What were your thoughts about that? Um, it feels like I'm an in a dictatorship <laughs> country. Well, um, I lived already in such a country, <laughs> but here it's even more. It feels like some like Turkmenistan, like you know, yeah. flat um, landscape, large buildings, but everything we see universities parks here outside of the city is empty no people where are the people are they in jail i don't know at first we decided to go to the mountains and the road from tashkent took approximately an hour and a half and then we reached the best ski resort of the country called amersoy welcome on board uzbekistan airlines We came to the most modern ski resort here in Uzbekistan called Amersoy. I was really nicely surprised because I didn't have any expectations and here it's so beautiful like the scenery around mountains covered by the snow. This is like what you now expect from Uzbekistan and I'm so happy to show this to you. Since we came quite late we didn't have time to ski but we still decided to go up to see the scenery and also have dinner in the mountains. Oh my gosh, are you ready to see this view? After a short walk, we went to the restaurant where we wanted to try local cuisine. We took bread for the starters and it turned out to be with the pieces of meat, which was quite interesting and tasty. Also, we tried potato crackers for the first time and of course we took meat, for which Uzbekistan is famous. The grilled chicken just melted in my mouth and the lamb was also very juicy and tasty. We just finished our first dinner in the mountains of Uzbekistan. What can I tell? It was absolutely excellent and I compared it to the dinners we had in Gudaure, the most modern, the most modern and the best ski resort in Georgia. And every time the food there wasn't so good, but here the dishes were excellent. 
Uh, I especially love those potato croquettes, which is, by the way, Argentinian dish. And also the, the chicken was so soft, like I love it a lot. So. And it wasn't that expensive. We took quite a lot of dishes and paid just $30 for three of us. As for the hotel, we rented two rooms in the guest house, 20 minutes drive from the resort. It actually looked quite nice. We paid $45 for each room and the breakfast was included. And in the morning, our adventures begin. Because of the huge snowfall at night, all roads were covered with the snow. And because of this, we couldn't get out, no matter how we tried. We tried putting chains on the wheels. And although at the beginning it seemed that we would be able to get out, one chain broke and we couldn't leave. This is our last chance. Yes, our last chance was a tin rope that was attached to the car in front and ours. And guess what? Natasha, we are going to ski. Because of the icy roads, we couldn't go farther, even with the help of the tourists who were stuck on the road too. Therefore, we had to rent chains from the local. International cars don't work. Russian cars drive perfectly. Well, here we are, climbing this mountain, you know, and uh, the chains are really, they really came to our rescue. It's so wonderful, but who would have thought, you know, in Uzbekistan, well, of course, that's not the end of the story. After we returned the chains, we couldn't stop the car. It's getting more interesting or no. Brakes don't really work in this weather. Well, it's not the brakes, it's the tires. They're summer tires. They really, they have no grip on this kind of road. That's so dangerous. Like, Love that. we can't stop the car. The sound you hear is the ABS working. It's trying to block it from, um, from slipping. It doesn't really work, though. Anyways, after all these problems, we still made it to Amersoy. There's a huge line to buy ski pass and Natasha. <laughs> So guys, we are finally ready. It, we've been waiting so long. First, we've been waiting for an hour for the parking. Then we've been waiting for like 40 minutes to buy ski pass. Then we've been waiting for around an hour to rent everything. So it's been long, but finally ready. We are going to try the Blue Mountain firstly, because the green one is like so small. So even though I'm not a very experienced rider, I think I can handle this mountain. I hope so. Slopes were very high class. The views are stunning. That's why I'm not surprised that this ski resort is considered to be the best one in the Central Asia. Last year, I've been doing four classes with the instructor in the Caucasus Mountains of Sochi in Russia. I made a video about this, you can take a look about it here. And then one day uh, I fall down very badly, if not helmet, I don't know like what's gonna happen. I don't want to be pessimistic, but nothing good. And I was doing like, like this to this side, there was ice and then I fall down with my back like that. And after falling down like that, I'm again incredibly afraid to snowboard normally like this person and not sliding. And I'm so sad, like I was doing so well last year and then after this fall I'm afraid again. Perhaps I couldn't overcome my fear this time, but I really enjoyed my time here and I'm absolutely sure that one day I will return. We just finished riding and it was excellent. Uh, the trail is amazing, I really like it. I also talked with Slava, he approved it and said it was very interesting. Even for very experienced uh, riders, it would be very nice. So I'm very happy about this. But yeah, like this is something you never expect from Uzbekistan and I could never imagine that. So this is something for you to consider for your next trip in the mountains, go to Uzbekistan. As for the prices, they're obviously quite high for Uzbekistan. Um, snowboard, helmet and the boots will cost, cost me around 20, 22 dollars approximately for one day, which I think a little bit overpriced for this country. And um, ski pass for one day cost us 
approximately thirty dollars. Well, it was excellent. You know, I think it exceeded my expectations. Matter of fact, I've been to this um, ski resort before, but just as a visitor during the summertime, of course, there was no snow. But now I was skiing, and I tried one of the hard, one of the hard level slopes, and you know, I did it. <laughs> Lots of foreigners. I, I, I met. Well, last night we met Australians, and this night we met them on the slope. Also, I, I met Germans, I met an American guy and a Thai lady, and they actually came from Kyrgyzstan here for three days to ski, because Emersoy is world class. I am actually a beginner, which means that if you begin, you probably have to continue, but I don't want to <laughs> continue and study more, so um, I took uh, a lesson with an instructor to ski and actually I already tried snowboarding three years ago even without an instructor just with a friend and somehow I managed to uh, to snowboard really okay-ish but here I was so scared he taught me how to uh, do breaks I created a joke uh, luckily that is uh, he taught me how to break not how to break leg <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, well I like <laughs> I like this resort more than Gudauri 100% uh, yeah as I said I'm not here for skiing but to observe these beautiful views it's delicious food in that restaurant mm, so yeah I, I liked it Good morning, my friends. Yesterday, we spent a day in Tashkent. It was very lovely. I met with my local friend and made a video about this, which you can take a look here. And now we came to the train station called Severny Vokzal, and we're about to explore to one of the oldest cities here in Uzbekistan. I'm super excited, so let's go there right now. As in the most other post countries, we had to go through security and check our bags. And here is our high-speed train, which was built in Spain and can accelerate up to 300 km per hour. How people dress out here. Wow, so beautiful. You guys are running late. Late? No, we're not. <gasps> a ticket from Tashkent to Samarkand costs about $10, and a small snack and hot tea were included in this price. The journey took approximately two and a half hours, and during this time we were able to see some natural sights of the country. Small villages where people live and even work a little bit. So guys, we just came to Samarkand. This word means stone from the local language. As for the first impressions, the city seemed lower than the capital. Of course, we saw signs of Pepsi as everywhere, as well as the combination of three languages – Uzbek, Russian and English. And on the way we saw this wonderful Chinese square and there is a Confucius statue, like, wow! Very interesting, I did expect this. And also, behind this, there are some Orthodox churches, which is also very interesting combination. Well. well, guys, walking around Samarkand, you gotta watch out for those ditches because you might step into it and fall and hurt yourself. We don't want that to happen, do we? So just look around, and I guess it's uh, when everything melts after winter, you know, there's plenty of water, and so they're used to make sure there's no water on the streets. So all water stays in the ditches. Well, worth to say that you can see the same things in Tashkent and I suppose in most other cities here. Later we put our bags in the hotel and went for a walk, and it's worth noting that I was very surprised to see that most of the people on the streets were men and there were so few women. Safety first. We came to try one of the best dishes in Uzbekistan, and that is samsa. Those are tiny pies with meat. Sometimes they come with potatoes. Let me show you how samsa is being cooked. In the beginning, the oven is washed, then it heated up, and later the dough with the meat is placed on the walls of the oven. 
but these are small, they come with meat. But I've also heard that it's called some mm. or salsa. There are a few layers of dal and very soft meat inside of it. Uh, and it's actually quite crude, but I don't know, the combination itself is so good. Maybe it's the best, uh, the best one I tried actually. And of course, some tea. By the way, Emma saw teapots and mugs look like that in Uzbekistan. And now we came to the heart of Samarkand, Rajasthan. Rajasthan, it's actually a school, there are three buildings, two of them were built in the 15th century and one on the 17th century. And I can't wait to go inside, let's go! Rajasthan means a sand place in Uzbek language. In ancient times, this central square was covered by sand and honestly, I was expected it to be somewhere in the desert, but it's located just exactly in the city center in the park. What's the price? It's uh, five dollars each. That's okay. As you can see, the towers are not exactly straight. It's turned a little bit to the left. We took a private tour for fifteen dollars, and it was the best decision. We learned a lot from it. Since Samarkand was located on the Silk Road, Rajasthan was the central square where merchants and farmers sold their goods, and this place was also known for its public executions. And we also had the opportunity to see the local art there, embroidery with the silk threads, and it definitely looks very beautiful. Would you like to have one at home? The women used to cover with this their faces after the 8th century when Islam um, religion came to the country. Let me show you the most exciting fact I learned. When the astronomer Mirza Ulugbek comes to power, he turns this square in the center of science and education, he built madrasa buildings, which became Muslim spiritual universities. And it's also worth to mention that many people didn't like him because he didn't participate in the wars much. So you are wondering why the doors are so small, maybe one meter and a half, and actually it used to be that when the students were coming to their rooms, they were supposed to pray and to like not to not, yeah, to respect it. And then do this. And we're going inside, let's go. So here students were studying and on the second floor they were living. It looks so beautiful, all this design and paintings. I know it's Iranian style. Uh, but the only thing that right now it's became so touristy, like almost every room has some tourist shop, which I don't really like, but overall it's still very nice. Yeah, anyway. We just came to Bazaar, or it's maybe Ferma Market, where you can try some local dishes, buy spices, or oh, fresh vegetables, and some souvenirs as well. Looks very pretty. Try and local sweet Hawaiian. Mm. Remind chocolate a little bit. So good. Mm. Just... This is Navai, local sugar. So we are trying right now sugar, which looks like stone. I know I've seen this before. Mm. Yeah, it's like sugar, but not that sweet as the normal one. And I feel also like a big taste of mental, mental. Now we came to the section of cheese and let's try some very unique local cheese that you probably never tried before. Kurt is a fermented milk product of Nomas. Its taste is sourly bitter and Natasha just loves it. She told me so many things about it, but to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Later, we were just walking around and exploring other Asian buildings.
Смотрите, какая лепешка. Наташа и я решили попробовать локал плов. Basically, it's a rice with meat, um, carrot and ju ju raisins. And raisins. Mm -hmm. Looks very nice. And uh, Slava also told us that the difference from the local plov to Tashkent one that they don't mix carrot with the rice. Mm. I like it, even though I found it a little bit fatty. Um, the carrot is actually sweet, so it's a nice combination of meat and sweet carrot and rice with some spices. Uh, I would definitely recommend you to try it, uh, but probably not for the breakfast, which is usually this dish is being eaten here in Uzbekistan. I can't help but saying how wonderful locals are. All around our trip, they were doing their best to help us somehow. And our last place to visit on that day was the Asian Cemetery, and I definitely have not seen such gorgeous ones before. So since I miss New Year in Russia, which is the most important holiday where we usually give some presents to our family, I decided to give a present to my mom. She really likes silk scarf and I think it's she will love this color. Our time in Samarkand just came to an end. I actually really like the city much more than Tashkent. There finally was something to see. And I don't know, just very enjoyable, was very clean. There are some nice places to it, so I absolutely recommend you to visit it. And now we are going to Bukhara. It's another Asian town here in Uzbekistan and it was also on the way of the Silk Road. So our train just coming here and I suppose let's go and explore it. It took us one hour and a half to come from Samarkand to Bukhara and the tickets cost again approximately $10. It's a coffee time. This is nuts with them, a sugar glazur, and these are local sweets. And my first impression was the crazy taxi drivers. Like guys, they didn't let us go at all. They were so annoying and they didn't understand the answer no, that we already ordered a taxi. They're like, they start creating something that, oh, he will never come, the kid doesn't have any gas, you're gonna stop somewhere. And we're like, it's okay, we already ordered it. But other than that, Bukhara seems to be very different from Samarkand because it seemed even lower than the previous city. And also the walls here are made out of stones and most of the houses there. Let's see our atmospheric room, oh my gosh. I already really love the door. Very, looks very ancient. Wow. I absolutely love this tiny room. I don't know, it's just so atmospheric. And I think when you are living in such places, you feel the city even more. Natasha, do you like it? Yes, I didn't expect that we would live in such a history. It's like a former madrasa. But it's not a madrasa, and here is what the owner of the hotel tells. Это на самом деле не мадреса, это караван сарай. Он называется хурджин. Хурджин это сумка того времени. In easy words, in the past it was sort of a motel for nomads who were traveling around and stopping by for a night. Состояние мы получили. 
этот угу. объект. Нашими силами, нашими усилиями мы вот отреставрировали этот процесс реставрации. И за это нам государство дало в аренду, и мы пользуемся. Mm. Later it was time for lunch, and we came to the place that all locals recommended us to try local plov, and I was very shocked seeing that the majority of people were men. What I wanted to pay your attention for is that everyone is drinking tea in Uzbekistan. So when the waiter, uh, when we were ordering food, the waiter didn't ask what we want to drink. He asked which tea do we want, green, black, with lemon or no? So everyone is drinking tea. And we are not exception. And here is how plov is made in Uzbekistan. Impressive, isn't it? And actually there are just two portions and look how huge giant it is. So this is horse meat and this is lamb. Can you see the difference between plov in summer cart? Now carrot is mixed with everything. I couldn't help but asking why there were so little women and it turned out that usually women are going to restaurants and not to such places while men are going to have a lunch there between their work. We just came up to the water tower to see the city from the booth and it looks super flat. I don't see any tall buildings and yeah, it's actually a quite nice view. Uh, also, a very interesting thing is that the tickets cost uh, differently for European and Asian nations. For example, for European it's 40,000 and for Asians it's uh, 25,000. And it seems as we Russians consider it to be Asian nations. From the watchtower you can see that one of the highlights of Bukhara and that is the residence of the last Emir. And if you look over there, it's a grand building with, with uh, majestic gates and this is where he would receive uh, guests from all over the world. So here you can see one poor camel which is staying here for tourists for taking pictures and riding around. Uh, I'm not going to try for exploitation of animals. Camels were very popular in the Asian towns here in Uzbekistan because they were transferring food and other things. But still in some cities like Bukhara, they're breeding them. So that's why one is staying here. Poor animal. Of course, we just had to visit the winter residency of last Emir. Again, we took a private tour. It cost $8 to us. But to be honest, there are not so many things to see except this beautiful place. Guys, behind me you can see the throne, but an interesting thing is that emirs, they didn't sit on the throne before. They were sitting on special carpets and only last emir put a throne to himself. Although the tour wasn't bad, the place seemed a bit boring to me. It's basically a historical museum now and I'm not a fan of such places. So we changed the location to the summer residency. We just came to the summer residence of the last Emir, who actually studied in St. Petersburg. And therefore you can see the influence of Russian architecture to here. Oh my gosh, guys, are you ready? Just take a look how many cuties there are. i never seen so many birds in one place. They're adorable. Oh my gosh. This place was definitely to my test. There was lots of things to see, amazing art and architecture, and the sad fact is that the last Emir was building this residency for seven years, but was able to live here only three. After the revolution of 1917, the Soviet government came to rule, and at some point they came after Emir, who was forced to flee to Afghanistan and live the rest of the life there. Now we're entering the old town of Bukhara, the most iconic place of the city. In the past, such wall was all around the city. Unfortunately, it hasn't been completely preserved. But despite this, the old town impresses with its authenticity.
I want to show you this place, Mir Arab Madrasa. It used to be, let's say, a Harvard in the 16th century. It was a super popular place to study and actually right now it's still working. Students are inside right now studying something. And here is the main tower, which can be the main side of the city. It used to be an observation tower. And another purpose of that was go to prayer five times per day. There were four people uh, singing from there. Oh, look back, Madrasa. Wow. While we are walking here in the tiny streets of Old Town in Bukhara, I wanted to share something that actually Natasha noticed in the very beginning, is that the majority of people here in Bukhara look more like Tajik and not like Uzbek. And later the tour guides confirmed about this. For example, we just met a few women and they didn't speak Russian. They were speaking Tajik language or Farsi language to us. And an interesting fact is that, for example, in Tashkent, when a person meets somebody he doesn't know, he starts speaking Russian language to him. While in Bukhara, people start speaking Farsi language to the person they don't know. Hello! Well, since many of you told me to continue feeding stray dogs here in Uzbekistan, what I notice is that I have not seen any. I haven't seen any in Tashkent, none in Samarkand, and in Bukhara I saw little, so I can't feed them. Of course, on our last day of the trip, we were stuck on the street since the hotel was closed. Because there is a chain to our hotel and we can't open it. Fortunately, after some time, we could get into the hotel. We had some tea and also a few hours of sleep, and then went back to Tashkent, four hours in the train. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think about Uzbekistan in the comments. I was personally amazed by this country and I definitely want to come back in summer to explore more Asian parts of it. And if you like this video, don't forget to push the like button and if you want to support my channel, join my Patreon community and I will be sending you postcards from different countries. Let's explore the world together, shall we?